Next, as we've been reporting, the president has made his feelings about the more violent elements of these protests known, even threatening military action inside the U.S. to quell the unrest. So we wanted to take a closer look at how the president has talked about other protest movements, both inside the U.S. and around the globe. Our David Wright has this report. I am your president of law and order and an ally of all peaceful protesters. President Trump has cast himself as the strong man, standing up to the mob. These are not acts of peaceful protest. These are acts of domestic terror. This week, law enforcement aggressively cleared peaceful protesters from Lafayette Park, the square just across from the White House. So President Trump could walk over and have a photo op outside a boarded up church holding a Bible. He vowed to take back the streets from thugs and troublemakers. Mayors and governors must establish an overwhelming law enforcement presence until the violence has been quelled. If a city or state refuses to take the actions that are necessary to defend the life and property of their residents, then I will deploy the United States military and quickly solve the problem for them. That approach in stark contrast to his message to protesters in other countries. Earlier this year, Trump tweeted support to the brave, long-suffering people of Iran. My administration will continue to stand with you, he said. We are following your protest closely and are inspired by your courage. Just this past weekend, Trump had this to say about Hong Kong and the demonstrators there. Just if you take a look, smothering, absolutely smothering Hong Kong's freedom. Young people there have fought hard in the streets, despite a brutal crackdown from Beijing. Trump isn't opposed to street protests per se. Even in this country, he was famously and controversially even-handed when it came to white nationalists in Charlottesville. So you said there was hatred, there was violence on both sides. Uh, are well, I do think, think there's blame. The yes, I think there's blame on both sides. You look at you look at both sides. I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. More recently, Trump said there were very good people among the protesters in Michigan who stormed the state house in Lansing, demanding the Democratic governor lift stay-at-home orders from COVID-19. Some of those protesters carried automatic weapons. Trump praised them, but no praise for nonviolent protesters who've taken to the streets over the killing of George Floyd. And Trump labeled those involved in violent demonstrations domestic terrorists calling for a military response against them. This week, Democrat Joe Biden accused Trump of fanning the flames of hate. Is this who we are? Is this who we want to be? Is this who we want to pass on to our children and our grandchildren? Fear, anger, finger pointing, rather than the pursuit of happiness? President Trump hasn't said what, in his view, an appropriate way to protest police brutality might be, except to suggest that, in his view, it's not this. Trump has repeatedly criticized quarterback Colin Kaepernick for taking a knee during the national anthem because of the brutality of police towards young black men. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners, when somebody disrespects our flag, to say, get that son of a off the field right now, out, he's fired. Trump even joked with police academy graduates that a little brutality might even be a good thing sometimes. I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? So his vow to dominate the streets is not out of character. I am mobilizing all available federal resources, civilian and military, to stop the rioting and looting, to end the destruction and arson, and to protect the rights of law-abiding Americans, including your Second Amendment rights. The Second Amendment to the Constitution includes the right to bear arms. In those remarks, Trump made no mention of the First Amendment, which guarantees freedom of speech and of assembly. 
David Wright, ABC News, New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.